Now, how can you lower insulin? If that is the step you want to take, that's a little easier said than done. First, control carbs. This is, I put it first because I deem it the most important. You, you want to make sure you're, whatever carbs you're getting, uh, that you're focusing on sources that are not coming from bags and boxes with barcodes. The whole fruits and vegetables, eat them, don't drink them, are generally going to all be good. There's different levels we could go with different depths and, and defining that a little more clearly depending on the beginning. But just in its simplest form, just control carbs. Next, prioritize protein. Make sure you're getting abundant, high quality, which means preferably animal source protein every day. Third, don't fear fat. In particular, don't fear the fat that comes with the protein. In nature, there is no exception to this. Every protein comes with fat. Don't be afraid of it. We, I understand we have a fat-phobic culture now. You need to reject it. Fat is not only essential, we need it. There are some fats that are necessary for human survival, but they also have no effect on blood sugar or blood insulin. So it's a nice nourishing option. You have to get over the fear of fat, especially the fat that comes with protein. So those are the three steps. Control carbs, prioritize protein, don't fear fat. That will really help you lower insulin. So that is that insulin step that really moves you down the journey very, very far. Indeed, that step alone, only focusing on lowering insulin, never worrying about calories, may be sufficient for anyone listening to shrink their fat cells as much as they need to and as much as they want to. In some people... They may plateau a little earlier than they'd like by focusing only on the insulin. They'll get some benefit, indeed maybe a lot, but they know they got a little further to go. Now you are ready to take that other step, that other foot that's been so firmly planted and you just had one really big step that got you farther down the road with the insulin uh, lowering. Now you can take that next step, which is addressing the energy explicitly. Usually the energy corrects itself for reasons I mentioned earlier, that when insulin's low, your body's using its own stored energy. All of those energy bars, if you will, that you've had stashed away in your fat cells are finally being opened up to be used, which is what they're there for. So sometimes people will begin restricting their, they'll have greater satiety and start eating less just on their own without even doing it deliberately. Indeed, that is what usually happens. But if you need to, now you can explicitly address the energy part of it, but don't do so by counting calories. Do so rather by structured fasting. So that's that fourth part of the three parts I gave earlier. The fourth could be frequently fasting. And that can take any form. Um, we'll have more discussion in the future about specific versions of fasts, but suffice it to say, a period of structured fasting and then eating can be a very, very good way to overall restrict energy in a, in a healthy way. Um, now, one comment on that, though, uh, is that um, fat uh, with, with fasting, how you end a fast is more important than uh, how long you fast. So the temptation is to obsess over a 48 hour fast or something like that. And then you get so hungry that you just binge and then you stuff yourself full of food that came from likely bags and boxes with barcodes and you feel miserable mentally and physically. Uh, and that basically leads into a disordered eating pattern of, of almost kind of a binge purge. Um, cycle. You don't want that. So how you end your fast matters more than how long you fast. Have a very specific meal plan in mind for when you are um, ending your fast.